the shilling has been weakening and this has been attributed to a number of factors. The shilling has been weakening um, over the last few months and this has largely been driven by a number of factors. Number one, the dollar has been strengthening uh, because of interest rates um, in the US which makes a lot of investors take money to the US which leads to a capital flight of sorts. Uh, number two, we've seen uh, the, uh, the demand for dollars locally, especially among importers, uh, continue on the rise because many businesses are recovering from the COVID pandemic, manufacturers are getting back to their factories. So the demand uh, for dollars for importation um, has actually been rising. So those two factors um, have contributed to uh, a much weaker shilling. If inflation in the U.S. continues to persist, and we'll be getting inflation numbers, U.S. inflation numbers tomorrow, if they continue to persist, then it's likely the Fed will maintain high interest rates and the dollar will remain strengthening. Uh, but if inflation starts to go down in the U.S., you might start seeing interest rates in the West um, going down and uh, more investors coming back to emerging markets uh, such as Kenya. Um, I think on the Kenya side, it will also depend on the remittances. Uh, remittances have been a strong part of uh, dollar supply and those continue to grow. So if we have many of the Kenyans, particularly in the US, which contributes about 50% of remittances, if that number goes up, it might provide um, some support. But also there's a fuel side where Russia is uh, threatening to reduce um, their oil production and that could make <coughs> oil prices go up.